it's that time again. Initiation into Hermetics by Franz Barden. some light on the matter. It's a bit blurry. Do I need to... Is that better? Yes, that's better. All right. Magic Psychic Training 6. In the fifth step, we learned how to project the elements outwards. Now, we shall go further and learn how to master the Akasha principle with respect to the elements. It has been mentioned in the theoretic part that the elements are originating in the Akasha principle by which they are dominated and kept in the correct balance too. A magician who after a long time of exercising has achieved good results with the elements will also be capable to control the finest principle, that is the astral ether. The exercise is as follows. Take up your usual posture, asana, and close your eyes. Imagine you happen to be in the centre of an unlimited space. Here is no above, nor below, nor any sideway. This unlimited space is filled with the finest energetic matter, the universal ether. Ether is colourless, but to our senses, it appears to be of an ultraviolet, near black violet colour. And this is the colour in which we do imagine the etheric matter. You are inhaling this etheric matter and convey it deliberately through the pulmonary breathing to the blood. If you have achieved a certain skill in doing so, execute the same operation with consciously breathing through lungs and pores, as you did in the accumulation of the vital power, but with the one difference, that you inhale the coloured ether and fill your whole body with it. Instead of, <coughs> excuse me, instead of with the vital power. Performing this exercise, you have to retain the feeling of being united to the entire infinite space. You have to be, as it were, completely secluded from the world. <clears throat> it is necessary to become familiar with this unusual state of mind. In any case, you ought, to you ought to avoid to lose your consciousness and to fall asleep. Supposing you do feel tired, better break up the exercise immediately and choose another time when you are more fit. After some, un after some successful exercises in the whole body poor breathing with Akasha, you can go ahead. We have heard that Akasha is the primary source, that means the sphere of all causes. Any deliberate cause may be such as a wish, a thought, any imagination created in this sphere together with the dynamic concentration of willpower, Unshaken faith and fullest conviction is bound to be realised with the help of the elements, regardless of the level or sphere on which the realisation has to be necessarily performed. This is one of the greatest magic mysteries and a universal key for the magician, who will understand its range only later on, in the course of his development. The scholar should always keep his mind on his own ethical development, which will certainly help him to do good and noble deeds only. Our next exercise will be to win absolute control of the elements with the help of the Akasha principle in all the three realms. The exercise is as follows. You are sitting in your usual position inhaling through the lungs and all pores a stream of Akasha and filling the whole body with it. At this point I should like to mention that that Akasha cannot be accumulated in the same way as vital power. At the very inhaling, you must imagine that you are starting the control of the four elements. Consider that you have already got the, the faculty of mastering the elements and that they will fulfill everything you are ordering or wishing for, no matter on which plane the realisation of your desires has to happen. You ought to feel with every breath your mastery of the elements. The faith 
and the confidence in your control of the elements has to be unshakable and imperturbable. You must not allow yourself the faintest doubt. Anyone who is working scrupulously through all these exercises will gain the absolute control of the elements after more or less exercising. A magician who has established a magical balance with respect to the elements in himself, having ennobled his character and having acquired the highest virtues and ideals, will very soon attain this power. He will feel his faith becoming as firm as a rock and will be absolutely sure of his conviction, which, which is excluding any doubt at all. On the other hand, a person who has not been working scrupulously through, or scholars who did skip any steps and neglected exercises, will feel doubtful about one problem or the other, and the influence of the one element which is keeping him in check most of all, will not tolerate to be mastered. <laughs> now and here the scholar will realise why such a high value is set on scrupulousness and endurance in the execution of the exercises. There is no gap allowed to spring up in the process of development, otherwise the scholar would fall behind, and some of the problems could only be set right after the greatest difficulties. The scholar, who is perfectly sure of his mastering the elements, will soon notice that he is capable of projecting the elements on all planes, outwards as well as inwards, very easily, so that all seems to be a child's play to him. Having arrived at this point, the magician can turn to transferring the power of the elements into a suitable ritual. I have been talking already about this problem in detail in the chapter about the rites. The magician forms any ritual after his own liking by means of finger positions and gestures of the hands into which he is transferring the power. According to his magical development, he will certainly dispose of a sufficient amount of in intuition. So that, he, so that he can compose the ritual suitable to the elements in question. He provides it with a self-selected word, in brackets, formula, and links it to a certain sound corresponding to the element. It is quite impossible to make a mistake here because these rituals are absolutely individual, purely personal. Therefore, rites which the magician did compose for this purpose are not to be imparted to anyone else. Another person could attain the same success in mastering the elements by using these rituals, which of course would happen at the cost of the magician's power who actually did compose the rites. Supposing a person that does not dispose of the magical maturity makes use of such rituals, he would certainly suffer great damages and bring ill fate to other people too, for whom the rites had been used. Be therefore very careful and select a, kind, select a kind of rites only, which you can use in a large crowd as well, without anyone observing it. For example, a ritual with a finger position in your pocket. The genuine magician will always regard this warning as fully justified. First of all, the magician must try to compose one ritual for an element of the astral sphere with which he is putting the virtue of one element in operation, and at the same time a second ritual, with the help of which he can dissolve this power again instantly, if he likes to. In the same way, he ought to operate with the other three elements, thus creating by his power eight rites for the astral sphere and eight for the material production as well. As soon as the rites did become, in a way, automatic by a long spell or exercising and repeating, it will be sufficient to use the ritual only, which will make the element start working immediately according to the purpose to be accomplished. If the magician wishes the effect to be cancelled, it will be enough to use the necessary revoking rite. This method should become a habit which renders performance easy and possible without any effort or imagination at all. Before, I did mention that the magician is capable to achieve everything through the action of the elements in the astral as well as in the material world. To obtain this state of maturity, a great amount of patience, endurance and tenacity will be required. 
Even then, when the scholar is developing more and more on higher levels, he ought to work the mastering of the elements until he really becomes a true master, and provided he be possessed by high ideals and wants to do good deeds only to help mankind, the divine providence will bless him, endowing him with unexpected faculties to make the most of them. Initiation into Hermetics by Franz Pardon.